My name is Sean Agbo. I am from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. In my work and in medicine, one of the most valuable tools is early detection. Imagine what we could do with more accurate information earlier. Benjamin Heller is a 45-year-old father of two beautiful girls. He developed lung disease that did not respond to any existing treatment. He required a lung transplant. Unfortunately, Ben developed rejection, which was diagnosed at late stages with biopsy, currently leading to lung failure. Indeed, half, 50% of lung transplant will fail within only five to six years of transplantation. Clearly, this is unacceptable. We identified early on that the current method for detecting rejection, biopsy, is quite invasive, insensitive, often detecting primarily late stages of rejection, as was the case with Ben. To get biopsies, doctors sedate patients, pass a tube down their nose into the transplanted lung, extract bits and pieces of that lung to look for rejection. On average, each patient undergo seven to 10 biopsies in the first two years of transplantation alone. For heart transplant patients, this is even more significant, over 25 biopsies in the first year of transplantation. We ask ourselves, could we identify a simple blood test, non-invasive, but sensitive enough to detect rejection earlier than biopsy? We could, and with cell-free DNA, we did. Cell-free DNA are short DNA fragments released into the bloodstream when cells die. Because the transplanted organ come from a different person, blood from that recipient contains cell-free DNA from that transplanted organ, also called donor-derived cell-free DNA, which is different from the recipient's own DNA. Using DNA sequencing methods, we showed that donor-derived cell-free DNA levels rises during rejection. This allowed us to detect rejection up to two to three months earlier than with biopsy. With such a discovery come many questions. First, would cell-free DNA help us monitor a patient like Ben more effectively than biopsy? Would early detection and early treatment of rejection guided by cell-free DNA prevent advanced stages of rejection and lung failure? We are initiating a clinical trial to answer just these questions. In this trial, we will monitor patients with cell-free DNA and assess how they do compared to patients monitored with biopsy. We are eagerly awaiting the results of this trial. Second, can cell-free DNA be used to monitor or guide treatment of other diseases like COVID-19? The answer to this question is yes. In the COVID-19 pandemic, triaging patients and availability of ICU beds was a major challenge. As part of our trial, we found a way to help with this problem. When patients tested positive for COVID and were being admitted to the hospital, we measured cell-free DNA in their blood coming from the heart, lung, kidney, and other organs. With this information, we were able to identify patients who would require ICU care with over 95% accuracy. In summary, we have proven that cell-free DNA is reliable and broadly applicable in transplantation, COVID-19, and other conditions. We are now testing if early detection and treatment of rejection guided by cell-free DNA would improve patient survival. My hope is that such a test could lead to the kind of early treatment that could save a patient's life, a patient like Ben.